So I'm, uh, I'm now going to bring up a presenter who herself will take center stage at the American mm -hmm. Library Association Conference as the winner of the 2019 Caldecott Medal for her illustrations for the book Hello Lighthouse. I want you all to give a very warm welcome to Sophie Blackall, who will induct Richard Peck, beloved novelist for young people and winner of the Newbery Medal in 2001 for a year down under. Thank you. Thank you all. Now, we were given very strict instructions to only speak for two to three minutes. I want you to know right now I'm going to speak for four. If any of you want to go to the bathroom in the extra minute, I won't blame you. Um, thank you to the Empire State Center for the book for asking me to speak, and congratulations to all of the inductees. I feel greatly honored but somewhat ill-equipped to pay tribute to Richard Peck. He was born in Decatur, Illinois in 1934, but I only knew him for eight of his 84 years. He wrote over 40 books, but I've only read a quarter of them. I'm sad about the former, regretting all the conversations we never had, but I'm glad about the latter. I'm thrilled to have so many of his books in store, to be able to read his voice in their pages, because this is what Richard Peck did so brilliantly. He wrote equally convincingly as a young man going off to war, or as a girl on the brink of puberty, as an irascible old woman with a shotgun, or Queen Victoria, or a mouse. <laughs> Richard said, I am a writer because I never had a teacher who said, write what you know. He said, the sacred secret of writing all fiction is this. A story is always about something that never happened to the author. Beatrix Potter was never a rabbit. <laughs> J.K. Rowling did not attend Hogwarts school. <laughs> but in all his voices, we hear his own loud and clear. As he once said to a library full of fourth graders, you never write about yourself, you just always wind up having written about yourself. <laughs> For his outstanding contribution to children's and young adult literature, Richard was awarded, among many others, the Margaret A. Edwards Award, the L. Edgar Allan Poe Award, the Scott O'Dell Award, the Newbery Honor, the University of Southern Mississippi Medallion, and in 2001, the year, the year New York was shaken to its core. He won both the Newbery Medal and the National Humanities Medal, the first time a children's author had ever won. We, his friends and family and readers, are delighted to see him inducted into the New York Writers Hall of Fame. Richard loved New York. He also loved ocean liners and pocket squares and desserts, especially pie. He loved Mark Twain and Zeppelins and big gentlemanly cars. He loved children enough to be angry on their behalf, angry at how we have failed them, how we have deprived them of books, of stories, and of the vocabulary word words they will need to defend themselves in the world. He was funny, Richard, bitingly funny, but as he said, humour is anger that was sent to finishing school. <laughs> Richard loved women, he especially loved men, he especially loved Edward, Prince of Wales. <laughs> he loved libraries and librarians. On the day he won the Newbury, Richard stopped by the New York Society Library, his favourite, to return his library books. I suspect he also went to be congratulated. <laughs> he researched and wrote many of his books in that library. He also went there to escape his cleaner. In a letter of appreciation, he wrote, I came to this library as a writer, one whose favorite write readers are young, though I don't believe in separate books for separate generations. In all my books aimed at the young, there's an old person reaching across a lifetime to touch a young hand. Richard also knew that between him and his readers were librarians with outstretched hands, ready to close the gap, to pass his books to the readers who needed them most, just as he was handed when he was in fourth grade the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, a book which would change his life. I could never be Mark Twain, he said, but I will die trying. 
On his last day here on earth, I had the privilege of reading to Richard by his bed. Feeling greatly honored and somewhat ill-equipped, I decided to read the very end of Huckleberry Finn, the bit where Tom talks along and talks along and says, let's all slide out of here one of these nights and get an outfit and go on howling adventures. And then I put down Huckleberry Finn and picked up A Long Way From Chicago and read Richard the ending of his own book. And I'm going to read you the ending if you'll indulge me. On the night we were shipping out from Dearborn Station, it occurred to me that the troop train would pass through Grandma's town sometime in the night. I sent her a telegram. I just wanted to tell her that the train might be going through town, though it wouldn't stop. In the way of troop trains, we left an hour late and sat on the siding outside Joliet for another hour. You don't get any sleep on a troop train. Our car was blue with smoke and noisy with a floating crap game. I sat through the long night, propped at the window. Then I knew we were getting to Grandma's town. It was sound asleep in the hour before dawn. We slowed past the depot, and now we were coming to Grandma's, the last house in town. It was lit up like a jack-o'-lantern. Every window upstairs and down blazed, though she was always turning out the light when she left a room. Now we were rolling past, and there was Grandma herself. She stood at the door, large as life, larger, framed against the light from her front room. Grandma was there, watching through the watches of the night for the train to pass through. She couldn't know what car I was in, but her hand was up and she was waving, waving big at all the cars, hoping I'd see. And I waved back. I waved long after the window filled with darkness and long distance. And Richard, we are waving at you tonight. Thank you, Sophie, for that incredible tribute. It is a great honor for my brother, Richard Peck, to be inducted into the New York State Writers Hall of Fame this evening. I would like to thank the Empire State Center for the book, the New York Library Association, and the Hall of Fame Selection Committee. I so wish Richard were still alive to accept this honor that recognizes and immortalizes his prominence in the world of children's and young adult literature. It is hard to believe that Richard has been gone for a year now. He was such a strong and vital presence in the world. He lived a full and well-traveled life, driven by intense curiosity and a strong desire to go everywhere and meet everybody, which he very nearly accomplished. An educator at heart, he understood the power of words, spoken and written, and the essential value of reading from a young age. Richard was from Decatur, Illinois. While in kindergarten, he told his teacher that he would someday be moving to New York City. <laughs> at the age of 37, he gave up his tenure at Hunter College High School's junior high division to write his first novel for young adults. He famously said at the time, I learned that the only way you can write is by the light of the bridges burning behind you. <laughs> for the next 45 years, he kept writing for the young across an ever-widening age gap and to generations very different from his own. Even late into his life, he was still able to speak through characters the young found authentic and inspiring. Characters who often, in the tradition of Mark Twain, take journeys of discovery into the world and are forever changed. He earned his large readership with every page by fearlessly addressing the issues of young people and for knowing that above all else, a writer's job 
is to entertain. We, his family and friends, and readers everywhere miss him greatly. He touched many lives with his writing, his wit and wisdom, and with his generosity in supporting others who aspire to be writers. Thank you for honoring Richard tonight by placing him in the company of some of the most celebrated and enduring writers, poets, and playwrights of our time. Thank you.